Hello, welcome. Here's a problem about graphing a logarithm. Take a moment, try it on your own, and then press play and we'll solve it together. So you could do this on a graphing calculator, but many of the logarithms that we graph, I think are really easy to manage by hand. I guess I shouldn't say easy, nothing's really easy here, you're learning a lot of things, but <coughs> excuse me, let me show you what I mean. So I see that we have the log base two. So I wanna think about that first. Where, are the, where would the log base two of x exist? This is my parent function. It's the basis for how I'm going to translate or move. I'm going to take this function, think about where the points would be, and then move the points according to these translations, where I go 3 to the right and then up 1. So I can quickly get some points for the log base 2 of x. I can say, well, I'm thinking of powers here. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. And 2 squared is 4. And I'll do one more. 2 to the third is 8. Now, as an exponential function, the points would be 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. But our logarithmic function reverses that process. The result is 1 with a power of 0. The result is 2, 2 with a power of 1. The result is 4 with a power of 2. And the result is 8 with a power of 3. So if I was graphing this right here, I would just plot these points, right? 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. But... These are translations of a function. If you remember, when you subtract the input, it essentially pulls the graph back 3, and it pushes our function to the right 3. So these three points go over by 3. Oh, cool. 1, 2, 3. And then they go up 1 here, adding 1 there. This is a horizontal translation. And then with vertical translations, if you're adding a positive amount, the function moves up. If you're moving it down, it moves. subtracting it moves down. Now, before I connect these and draw the general shape of a logarithm, which is something like this, right? Oh, boy, that's terrible. Which is something like this. Not much better. Um, think about the asymptote. Originally, the logarithm has an asymptote at the line x equals 0. So let's draw a quick line. Okay. Right? Well, that did not work. I apologize. Well, boy. Uh, line style. Okay. Cool. Let's see if it works now. I apparently cannot use a line tool. Let's see here. Okay, one more time. Third time's a charm. Oh boy. Style, okay, thickness, and I want it to be red. Okay, this is it, we got it. Okay, there's our asymptote. I'm gonna move it over. Originally, this is our asymptote, but for a logarithm, if we translate it three to the right, the asymptote also moves three to the right. One, two, three here. And this is the asymptote for our logarithmic function, which is now going to look something like this. Here, I'm going to be careful. It's going to climb slowly, but climb. And it's going to approach the asymptote here at the equation x equals 3, but never exactly reach it. So again, uh, each of these points, right, I'm thinking of my parent function here, 1, 0. Just to recap, that moved 3 over to the right, so moved to 4, and then up 1 to 4, 1. This moved to 5, 2, and 5, 2 is 3 to the right from 2 and up 1 from this point here, and so on and so forth. So when you're dealing with a logarithmic function, look at the base. Write the parent function that shares that base. Generate some points using an exponential relationship, and then flip the points around to get your logarithmic function. These are our parent points here, right? And then perform any translations that you see. In this case, you went 3 to the right and up 1. All right, hope that helps.